Welcome to a Virtually Unbreakable podcast where we inspire you to live happier and more fulfilling lives. My name is Ella and I'm your host. Today my guest is Pradeep Kumar. Pradeep is a keynote speaker, an author, um, a scientist and an educator. Uh, Pradeep has graduated from University of Oxford and Harvard University. And throughout his career, he has been involved in building and buying global brands. And the topic of today's discussion is business and mental health. I'm pleased to have you here with me. So sit back, relax and enjoy this episode. Pradeep, so nice to see you here with me today. How are you? Great. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. Um, and thank you for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to talk um, talk about this topic because I think it's very important to many people across the world. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, and nice to have you here. You have an extraordinary life story, actually, because you're someone who um, went from being, I hope you don't mind me mentioning, um, a teenage gangster um, High, uh, high school dropout uh, to an award-winning scientist in at Harvard in seven years. Um, and you became a, v- a vice president in a biotech company with a revenue of nearly two billion. Um, how did you do that? Um, and what, what was your motivator uh, here? What was... Um, at what point did you decide in your head you need to do that switch? Talk to me yeah. about that. So my parents were immigrants from Sri Lanka. Uh, we grew up with you know very rough um, council estate. If Americans are watching, it's a bit like as uh, social housing they, you call it in the states. Um, mm-hmm. So you don't know what you don't know, and you're surrounded by the people who you're surrounded with. So career and university was an option. Didn't know much. Got into a lot of trouble. Luckily, had weights and weightlifting gave me some discipline but I got into a serious fight when I was 21 went into a kind of a small coma woke up I tell wow. people I didn't see God I didn't see anyone special I said what am I doing with my life my parents risked their their lives to come here uh, I'm not doing much uh, I need to I need to start switching up um, changing everything around so 21 I, I applied mm-hmm. what they call the foundation access course uh, Politic okay. University in Westminster gave me a chance, and then then the discipline, drive, uh, sheer will. <laughs> if you mm-hmm. had quality, it's just sheer will took mm-hmm. over, and um, I went um, all out for it. And each step, I planned, strategized, and I executed, and I kind of got it. Wow, what a what a driver and a resilience, and what an inspiration to so many people because. Um, some of the some of the young people watching this uh, could maybe resonate. Um, you you can't choose your family, and you certainly can't choose your living conditions, especially during your young years. Yes. Um, we are kind of given certain set of cards, right? And we have to play those cards the best we can. And then, obviously, some of us are more driven than others to get, let's say, better cards or to improve our life situation. Um, but yeah, to, to have so much determination at the age of 21 shows you that anything is possible, really. It is possible. And I, and I tell you, you can't dictate what card life gives you, but mm-hmm. you can go away and make your own game up. You know, yeah. if, if, if the ace or the king is good in normal games and you're given a two or a three, make your own game up. Uh, yeah. and, go and, and go and win your own game. And I tell the students uh, and the mentees that I have, there's, there's only little you can do with your weaknesses, but you've got to maximize your genetic potential um, yeah. because that's the only thing that's going to actually give you an uh, advantage anywhere in a competitive sphere. Um, and that's the only thing you can do. Yeah, that is a very good point, actually. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think many of our listeners don't realize that um, when they have a certain set of life circumstances that they see and experience every day, they um, subconsciously allow those circumstances, those p- 
people that they meet regularly, the the events, the the, the task they com uh, compete ev complete every day, to play the main role in their head as to this is what I am, mm. and what they forget is their true inner potential. They forget about their dreams very often because dreams seem to us so often as something that is so far away that is unattainable that is some people may associate it with something that's in our head right that's not real dream is not real but actually if we live our life remembering what our dreams are and who we want to become um, and really believing that we can become that, that anything is possible and surround uh, our, our, ourselves with a couple of, doesn't have to be a crowd or great support network, but a couple of idols or icons who have achieved something extraordinary to mm. drive us through life. That can really make, build a bridge between our current reality and our future right yeah. that can be just enough to make the next step um, the next week and then take the next step and can just see you through so yeah it's it's a very important point i'm glad you've mentioned that um thank you for this so i wanted to ask you um you know throughout your extraordinary career and life you have been um working with people you have been managing people you have been a lect uh, lector at the university um uh, and you have your mentees what role has a social network played in your success so far especially I'm interested to know when things got tough in your life, was there someone you could count on and what role did they play? Yeah, so on team management, I think um, all my success have been based on other people, either giving me opportunities or me picking the right people to surround myself with, right? So the data that comes into you is through your five senses and you've got to make sure you're very careful of what surrounds you and who surrounds you, right? And yeah. how you manage them. So that's very important. Always try to pick the best people around you. Pick the people who are actually better than you. A lot of people, leaders are egotistical. Pick the people who are better than you. And I always pick people, young people especially, who are better than me uh, at the comparable age, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I say this lightheartedly, but also seriously, I've learned something. There's only probably 1% of really serious uh, driven talent out there for each profession. For those talented people, you give them freedom, right? Yeah. But everyone else, you give them an illusion of freedom and watch them carefully, that, right? That's, that's super interesting. How do you uh, identify the truly talented one? What? Yeah. What do you see in their behavior or in their characteristics to be sure that's the one I should give him more freedom at work? Right. So you can see that very quickly. I, I was in a CEO board meeting. I was talking <laughs> to these individuals and they're like, oh, passion, 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 passion. I'm like, yes, passion's good, but passion is like this, right? Mm -hmm. And in my life, I've only truly probably seen two or three people with real passion because passion for what they do takes a lot of emotional drive. And people say, oh, just talent and hard work and rigor, but passion is driven by emotions as well. And mm -hmm. keeping that emotion high all the time is really, really hard, right? Yeah. So when you see real talent, what they're doing is balancing the passion and also the hard work, but then what they're doing is being very practical as well. So they're going A to B very practically with a lot of passion and they themselves are developing. And they're also developing everyone around them. And you can see that talent because they're executing, but at the same time, everyone is better around them. Yeah. So those are kind of indicators that I say, oh yeah, this, this person's very good at what they do. Okay. But what, what about uh, your support network when you were building your career? So uh, less about the people you worked with and managed, but uh, your friends, your family, what role did they play in your extraordinary journey? Yeah, my family have been always supportive. Um, to be honest with you, my family are very humble, simple people. Um, I always help them. They always 
you know, told me to do what I want to do. But um, there was nothing that I can go to them for a point of contact or point of network or so forth. Yes, I can talk to them here and there. So what I kind of realized from a young age is that you got to go and network and actually build those people around you mm -hmm. and look up to people, right? I yeah. don't believe, you could have, I believe in a lot of mentors, a lot of role models, and it's fluctuating and fluid, right? Yeah. There's one set person or one set of books I read. I think you have to get the best of everyone and yeah. then kind of learn from them, then move on and move on and move on right I because see. you don't want to set okay. one character in you want the best of everything right if he's like a superhero you want to fly like superman you know you want to be strong like hulk you know you you, you got to have extra vision like x-men so you want everything so that's what i kind of worked out so if it's biotech learn from him if it's a lawyer that I like learn from him if it's a mentor in e-commerce okay. learn from him or her so that's what i do very well and i think those are the networks but for the young people listening, you got to go out and shake hands and you got to make um, networks and actually make it work and meet these people and win them over over time as well. It won't and just not be and not be shy uh, oh, no. about it because oh, don't be shy. I always say or I tend to say um, if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? How how can how can someone else apart from your mom or, or your parents you know see that confidence in you if you um you don't have to strive for extraordinary things in life but if you just want to become a better version or happier version of yourself and you're giving yourself some goals uh either professional or private goals you know um it's important to keep that end result at the back of your mind as you live your daily life. So whether that is getting accepted to university or graduating from that university or getting your dream job or a promotion or whatever that is, buying a house, it's important to keep that goal on the back of your head and not let the our daily reality to eat into your creative energy, right? And to make you anxious and... Um, and perhaps depressed in some cases as well because today young people um suffer a lot from anxiety and stress mm. uh lots of young people in their late 20s early 30s already suffer from burnout um you as someone who has worked for so many years in a and, and have gone up and up and up and been promoted a number of times and what was given more and more responsibility. Can you tell me, what did you learn about yourself and your own resilience during the time when you were building your career? A lot, yeah, uh, because, you know, if you step back, a daily routine for me yeah. is wake up, brush my teeth, whatever, and then I do affirmations and a mantras. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy spiritual, religious or anything, but I do have 20 minutes where I'm just walking around visualizing. And I, I say this and I, I don't care what people think. I literally live short-term, long-term goals in my head by walking around. If I'm meeting someone, I'm literally shaking people's hands and talking to them and there's no one in the kitchen, right? <laughs> oh, I'm giving a podcast or something or I'm expect accepting something or I've just... Mm -hmm the deal i'm literally doing it so visually it's in me right i don't know if this helps in resilience i'm just saying this is it yeah and then I go off and i go to the gym so i run weight lift and i started incorporating yoga and pilates in the last six months right so all that i think sets my day up very well very well it's just a positive boom energies right i think and i've been doing the 15 20 years the weightlifting i didn't even know if this was actually a good thing when I started, but it's an excellent thing now when looking back. I've been doing this for a long time. So I think early morning kind of resilience is always there. So that's a daily basis. Then on a kind of a long-term monthly basis uh, or yearly basis or career basis, it's just a numbers game. I tell people life is a sales game, a numbers game, and a risk game. So once one rejection comes in, I say, okay, I say, you know, rejection is a misconceived conception. Something's gone wrong. I'm going to change it here. Go again. 
So I've become very immune to rejections. Mm. And I think a lot of young people have to understand that, mm. that you get rejected so many times and so many people, even loved ones and close ones think you're cuckoo. You just have to keep <laughs> going. So if your daily routines are good and you keep that dream in your head and you exercise, I can deal with the stress and anxiety. Then yeah. have your long-term goals and deal with rejection. I think those two finally balance things out. But then... You know, it's a strange thing uh, I'm going to say. It's like um, I have this other saying I say to people is that you got to be a yogi in the journey, right? But then you have to be a Navy SEAL soldier when you execute practically and everything in between, you got to be Forrest Gump. You got to fail and just keep running, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and that's that balance you need to have. Practicality, yeah. being a bit spiritual, dreamy, and also just being stupid and foolish and just getting up and going yeah but that is that is super super clever approach really because um what i teach as well with, in my product in my business is that you have to build a balance between your physical fitness your uh, practical routines and your spiritual aspect of your life and a connection with yourself and I think what loads of people are missing, and more specifically about the last point, is that um, connection with yourself is that we are so um, uh, swamped with social media noise and with other people's approval, especially young people these days. They are so, you know, exposed to the likes, the following, the... Uh, you know the the social media connections the friendships online everything happens online uh, uh, young people these days very often lack connection with themselves mm -hmm. and they lack this self-acceptance and self uh, self-love so one thing you didn't mention but I've observed throughout our whole conversation is that you like and approve of yourself yeah. which is an important aspect to becoming successful in, in whatever sense successful. Um, yeah. And we all have to learn uh, to accept ourselves better for who we are and not be so self-critical, but develop this kindness and this compassion. And that compassion will help us when we face rejection when we face uh, difficult, you know, situations in life, adverse events, when somebody, a family member dies, or when a girlfriend leaves us or boyfriend leaves us, is that um, connection with yourself and the spiritual life um, that will really help us. But anyway, going back to the point, yeah, that um, point I, I think it's very important for young people, especially I realized that self-love and self-esteem is not arrogance please oh, okay. I, I need to tell the young people because i think a lot of people say oh yeah i'm not arrogant or i'm you know i don't want to self-love no self-love and self-esteem is critical you know when you face those rejections or those um low points in life you got to look in the mirror and say hey i've done all these awesome things i'm still here and i'm going yeah. ahead because i'm i'm great i am great just say i'm great i love myself i'm going ahead right but that's very important because I think in a world where we keep saying, oh, we got to be calm in ourselves, not reflect too much and not be arrogant. Arrogance, I believe, is doing something that you don't know and claiming that you can do it, right? And that's kind of confidence, overconfidence or playing arrogant, that's fine. But confidence, self-esteem and self-love is totally different. And I think the youth now mix it up and that yeah. kind of also gives them struggle as well. But I think... It's difficult sometimes to blame them because they only know what their parents teach them. Yes. Um, and, you know, I I am so passionate about what you just said that I've written a book about it, actually. It, nice. the, it's called Teach Your Kids to Build Positive Self-Image. Uh, self yes. Um, it, the positive self-esteem and positive self-image is so crucial for our good mental health that it's something that needs to be taught from young age. And yeah. it has nothing to do with arrogance. Yes. It has nothing to do with arrogance. It has everything to do with self-confidence and in seeing the positive aspects in yourself. Mm. 
And that is that factor, like we said earlier, that will keep you going and will help you be resilient when difficult things happen to you and they will happen to you. So yeah, I... as parents, those of us who have children or uh, perhaps carers, those who look after children should always remember that positive self-image in a child um, is something we should teach them. And the best way to teach them that is to model that in our families. So you, it's, it's going to be very unlikely to erase a global, let's call it a global leader, the next US president or the next British prime minister, if, if that person who becomes that, that in that role has a mother who is very humble and doesn't have any confidence about herself. So our parents need to show us how to become these people. They need to teach us, we learn from them and we store the information they give us in our subconscious mind. And then we live our life believing that that is the template. Yeah. Um, and Sometimes you've got to break the template. Sometimes yes. you've got to break it. And, you know, uh, yes. yeah, this might sound crazy, but there are times when I've just put a suit. I, they, I, I always try to put a suit on tie every time and walk out, right? Perception is everything. Mm. And so if in terms of physical modeling, I physically modeled myself, right? To wear nice things, go to nice places, not because I'm spending crazy money, just to be in the right environment to interact with the right people and have the right mindset. Um, mm -hmm. And that, even if you're from whatever background, anyone can do, right? And you can just do that. Um, so I, I'm a big believer. And one of the things I di did was, there was a very nice professor at my low tier university, he goes, how are you going to get to Oxford? I said, well, I'm going to take the train from Paddington. So my <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did, right? Ella, I, I put a suit. I love on. the answer. <laughs> I put a suit. On. I, be, I, I bet he, he didn't know what to say after that. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you're one in a million. I put a suit on and I, I literally went to Oxford doing half terms and stuff. And I just shook hands, went, met the people, understood what they're saying, understood how they're perceiving me. And I did that twice. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong here. I can be here. And then three years later, I was there at a PhD level. Then when I was at Oxford, everyone's like, oh, don't go to Harvard. It's like crazy work ethic, American, la, la, la. Yeah, yeah. I, I saved my scholarship money up because we're on scholarship, right? I took yeah. a plane to a conference. I just, uh, same thing, nice suit in the environment at Harvard. I was like, oh, I asked questions. I'm like, the science is still the same. <laughs> they, they don't work any different. Yeah. They're still human. And it's a mental model I fixed in myself. And that's what I keep doing in every profession. I just mentally go places where if I can't do it, I dress a certain way, speak a certain way, and I model my mind a certain way. And I just go and do it. I love that. Um, thank you for sharing. How inspirational. I think so. It's I, You could say, you could give one comment to that and say it's all up there, right? It's all up here. Which is, and what I mean by that is, your life becomes what you want it to become. If, Absolutely. If you, if you want to become, um, you know, an average, I don't know, employee working for someone, having um, a life that is, you know, not taking too much risk, very stable, maybe a bit boring, it's up to you to create that. Um, and you will create that subconsciously without even realizing. If you inspire, uh, aspiring to become someone um, uh, different, you will go after that dream. And <clears throat> remember that this Pradeep, you are a perfect example of someone who needs uh, actually is a proof, that walking proof that we need very little support from others to achieve extraordinary things in life. Extraordinary. And but what we do very often is we're looking for excuses why we didn't achieve something. And we yeah. very often point fingers at others, very often our parents and our families and where we grew up. And that is our excuse in our head as to why we are where we are. Oh, because of this and that. But that is just an excuse. Yeah, don't, nice. set, cool. don't settle. Don't yeah. settle for things that don't make you happy. Go and follow your dreams. Um, yeah. 
And, I, and, and you know, people say, oh, if you reach a goal or get this possession, you'll be happy. No, actually, I worked out. It's really the pursuit of those goals. It's the journey. It's yeah. that journey that's making me really that's happy. Right. Because, that's right. You know, and my friend said, you just love going for the impossible. But it's not like I have a crazy dream. I never mm. wanted to be, do all these things. I just wanted a degree. And then I wanted to discover drug. Then I wanted to do business development corporately. And then I just wanted to learn something to do my own business. And then once I do it and I see a bit of success, then I set the bigger goal and a bigger goal and a bigger goal. Mm. Uh, but it's not like I just think massive straight away. So yeah, it's that journey that really is mm. the changer. And if you don't have that kind of goal, if the goal is not hard enough, it also becomes a bit boring and it's like, okay, Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's important as well. And sorry, on a, on a um, tangent, of, because we're talking about mental health as well, something mm -hmm. I really want to tell the people watching and kids yeah. especially is that I think we have a narrative wrong about sleep um, and okay. like Hollywood and Western world thinks that all these geniuses, hard workers sleep four hours or five hours. I think that's nonsense. I sleep mm -hmm. seven to eight because I exercise and so forth. I think a lot of people I speak to sleep good hours as well. Yeah. Or you kind of adjust depending mm -hmm. on the day. I think it's very important as well because I cannot see any functioning people that are doing very well sleeping less than five or six yeah. hours. Yeah. And I think that's very important for mental health. Mm -hmm. And also as you go ahead, it's not about the quality, uh, the quantity of work you're doing, it's the quality of choices you make as a manager, right? Yes. And if you don't have enough sleep, you're not making better choices. So you I think make good decisions. For, yes. Yeah. For mental health and also career as well. I think that's hundred percent. And well done for uh, for mentioning it. Um, uh, you know, stress affects all of us. Um, a stress when it's not managed in the right way leads to chronic stress. Chronic stress is burnout. Burnout affects our relationships, our health, our um, our lives every day very very often without us realizing we become the more horrible version of ourselves and that all stems from lack a poor um poor way to manage stress but also lack of uh, rest and relax mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so the sleep is actually good diet sleep um is something that is fundamental for good mental health um, and yes, well done for mentioning it. I want to um, ask you the last question today. Um, what would be your advice to anyone who is perhaps going through a challenging time right now, um, whether um, a man or a woman, boy or a girl, and perhaps they're at the point in their life where they are feeling a little confused about themselves and what they want to do in life, how, to, how should they go about finding their passion? And um, what advice would you give them in terms of maybe starting their own business as well? Okay, so if they're in a problem, let's um, tackle that first, right? Mm -hmm. um, I get problems and stress every single day, every hour, right? Um, so I recommend straight away, there's two kind of parts, right? Number one, you practically say, what is the the dot? I, I talk about dark desires like they're bad, but what's the desire in you? What do you really want in life? Really want in life? And sometimes it's it can be materials or whatever. That's fine. Write that down, right? Write it down physically and say, that's the goal. And then write down what you need to do today. Even if it's like not getting there or going to a job center, writing a CV or resume, even if it's like, I need to do the shopping, write the to-do list, right? Once yeah. that to-do list is done, you have set goals. Like sometimes I say go to the gym and I just, I love just crossing that thing out. That right? yeah. So I say I write big goals, short-term goals, medium goals, and daily goals, right? So I write that those down so you have a plan of action. And even if it's like make my bed in the morning, right? That's fine. Yeah. You do that. And then there's the other side of it where I keep saying, what is the... what you think about thinking, why am I thinking this? And I think critical skill, um, thinking skills and um, self-reflection is missing nowadays. So yeah. why am I thinking this? What has happened for me to think this? Mm -hmm. What is external scenarios? And then I say, hey, I can't control these things. I can only control what's going up here. 
Yeah. So let me try to control things on my list and let me hit it, right? So those are the things I do. Practical lists and also self-reflection and critical analysis saying, I can't control many things. I'm going to control what's in me and control the way I'm thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So those are two things that I do. And then we can touch upon the business. If you want to do a business, again, there's a lot of things that you want to do, but I tell them, pull the trigger. Um, because when you pull the trigger, take the risk, and you dial deep, deep into it, trust me, you will learn to swim. Um, I think most of the time it's uh, paralysis by analysis, yeah. particularly if you're educated. It's, mm -hmm. the, it sounds silly. The more educated you get, the more risk averse you get, right? Affects me every single day. <laughs> oh, and it's not it's a bad horrible. thing, by the way. It's horrible. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I get educated, education very good for kids and so forth. I'm not saying don't get educated and I'm not saying educate people can't take risks or build businesses, you know, yeah. see all these people. But sometimes you people think so much into it. I think just be yeah. free. They talk themselves out of it. Yeah, and trust me, when you're in the deep end or you're in the darkness, yeah, you're like, oh, is this it? You find a way and it's not as bad as it, it, it is, um, you know. Those who leave you, leave you, it's happened for a reason. If you're in debt or if you're in you know, hard times, it's fine. You know, the times will come around and you'll be better. Um, I've been there. I've been in trouble. I've been in debt. I've been successful. I've been high, low, lost the business, started a business, lost the career, lost loved ones. Um, we're still here. Uh, I think you just have to just keep going. and resilience is, resilience is key, which is why we're talking to you about this today. It, it, it's, it's just hard to explain. You, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pradeep. It's been so refreshing talking to you today. Thank um, you very much for the opportunity. For any yeah. of you who are interested um, in finding out more about Pradeep, I will include the link to his LinkedIn profile and his uh, professional website underneath in the show notes. And I hope to see you all next week on Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.